Hi everyone Hello. and welcome to Back Chat. It's been a little while. Um, welcome to Move with Scoliosis, formerly Yoga Berry, of course. And thank you so much for those of you who are already here live, which is amazing. And um, if you're watching this on the replay, obviously welcome as well. And if you are new to my channel, um, we haven't done this in a little while. Uh, we've had a little bit of a break because you might see this is this is a different space here right now. So I have moved house. Um, I, I've built here this this new space for filming as well. Um, so it's been a very very hectic time basically for me. But on this channel, you will find um, all sorts of videos about yoga for scoliosis. Um, I recently also qualified as a Pilates teacher as well. So. Um, more and more Pilates videos coming up as well. But yes, these back chats are really there. I usually invite um, somebody else from the field here to have a chat with me because I really believe in sharing information and sharing what we learn. Um, nobody has all the answers and we're all here to learn from each other. So if you are here live, feel free to use the chat so you can get involved. Um, let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. Let us know if you have any questions. And my guest today is John Cloutier, and he's a kinesiologist. And I'm really, really excited to talk to him about his experience with yoga, with Tai Chi, Qigong. So, um, yes, really, really looking forward to this conversation. So let me bring him on right now. There he is. Hello. Hi. Hi, John. Whereabouts are you right now? So I'm in Montreal, Canada. And thank you for having me on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's not too early for, for you right now, then, is it? <laughs> no, it's noon here. Okay, yes, that's that's all right then. Good. So um, Scoliosis Relief is your company right now. Um, I would like to kind of get started maybe with your own story because most people, I haven't met anyone actually yet who is working in this field who doesn't have a personal experience with scoliosis. Um, so and I obviously I, I have read up a little bit on, on your biography, so I know a little bit, but maybe you can tell us how did you get into this and what's your personal um, story, your scoliosis story? Yes, sure. Uh, it's interesting, as you say, really, like it seems to go along with the field. If you if you're working, if you're helping people with scoliosis, you probably have experience with it. Yeah. So interesting. And uh, someone I was speaking to you recently said there's an expression like the best people to work with are the people who suffer from it or something there's something there's some expression about that some wisdom related to that hopefully <laughs> so my story is that um uh i was diagnosed with a very minor scoliosis just the borderline just 10 degrees right thoracic scoliosis um so but but i actually went to the doctor because i had a chest wall deformity which was much more significant and my, the left aspect of my thorax, it might look like it's the right because of the camera, but this is the left side uh, for me, was, was torsioned over. My left shoulder was fallen. My scapula were winged. So really poor posture, a bit of kyphosis. So a whole lot of, you know, really bad posture, bad postural habits. And it, so, so my diagnosis sheet says minor scoliosis, chest wall deformity. And what they suggested to do was they said, well, what we can do uh, at the Children's Hospital here, a surgical option is that we will... Um, open up your we'll section, your, your, your sternum, and we'll reposition your rib cage. So that was the surgical option suggested to me. Nothing to do with the scoliosis. It was too minor for, for that to be an issue. But so, so what I was living with was extreme rotation. So if you think about what was happening in my chest wall, so the left aspect of my thorax was, was sort of torsioned over like this quite a bit, quite a bit over. So the rotation, um, which is interesting because I had a right curve so the right part of my back is rotating to the back right so if, again this is yeah. probably not that easy to see from here but and then the left side forward so so the rotation aspect was much worse than the cob angle aspect for me personally right. so that was my thing yeah so the hospital said look we'll do this my parents said heck no <laughs> both my parents had had a background in in uh, yoga my mother was a was a pretty serious gymnast 
and they were both doing a lot of yoga at that time. They were doing seated postural yoga in, in a kind of the Zen tradition. So it's a bit of a different approach, but it's basically the, the cross-legged positions, classical yoga cross-legged positions um, done with criteria. So anyway, they said, look, if you want to work on it, you can't. Didn't do anything for years, went through years of being embarrassed at the beach, like really, and, and that was the biggest thing for me, um, which again, I, it, it, it is for most young people, that cosmetic aspect was it, 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 quite a lot. Um, so when I was 16, I decided to really start working on it. And I got into the Sita posture yoga, I got into Tai Chi, and I began to really start repositioning and derotating and working with my thorax and, and my back. And so if you were to see me with my shirt off from the side, there's still some, some deviation, but it's vastly improved. It's very different. I have no scoliosis on x-ray at all as of 2020, 2020 or 2021. Right. Um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and I had a lot of pain also when I was young. So between 14 and 16, I actually had a lot of pain and discomfort. And this is another interesting thing. You know, there's so many different parts you could jump off of here, right? But, you know, minor scoliosis, but actual pain, postural pain, pain in, in, on exertion, um, et cetera. So that journey to sort of wrap that up a little bit, you know, not spend too long on it, brought me into being uh, a kinesiologist at, at, at McGill. That's the whole reason that I went into the, the, the field of kinesiology is my own I was forced to work on my own back, you know, because I'm, I'm someone who loves to move. I'm, I'm naturally, I love to move. I'm, I feel pretty, I love being athletic. I love being into my body. And I just couldn't do all the things that I felt I wanted to be able to do. So there was that clash. So I say I was forced to work on it. I wasn't forced to work on it, but I'm glad that I did. Right. Because now I know what to do. And I've got all this experience working with my back. Mm. So did you ever kind of go down? Um, obviously, you, you, you didn't want to go down the surgery route, but was there any other kind of like more traditional treatments or anything that that you explored during that time? Yeah, good, good question. So I was given a list of physiotherapy exercises. And when the doctor or I don't know if it was the physio, but they got them from the physio. And when the doctor or the physio handed it to my mother, they said, Here's a list of exercises, but no one does them. Right. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> right. Well, but, th but what was so funny and ironic is that I didn't do them. So the short answer is no, I didn't explore anything else. I didn't do what they gave me to do. I didn't want it. And um, so it was only through what came to me through my family that I began to think about my posture and pulling in my back and repositioning my posture so that I could improve the, the structure. Mm. And the Yes, yeah, it, it sounds very, very similar to to my my story as well. It, it kind of being forced to um, make it your own responsibility, right? And to 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 take charge and um, yeah, find find other ways, obviously, of of helping yourself. So, how did you get? So, you said already your 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 mum was already into. Uh, definitely exercise, gymnast, yoga, and all of that. So how about the uh, the Tai Chi and Qigong? So just to warn you, I don't know a huge amount about it at all. So um, yes, if you could, well, tell us a little bit what it is and how you got into it. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a fascinating discussion and there's just so many different um, avenues to, to, to explore here. So if I could start off, by saying, by bringing our attention to the to the lovely convex versus concave controversy or issue, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so, so when I first started off, it wasn't with Tai, tai Chi and Qigong. It was with seated posture yoga, as I mentioned. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing is, is that seated posture yoga, like meditation posture per se, is actually a part of a Tai Chi curriculum traditionally. Okay. So when you go really into people really working on tai chi and the tai chi classics um talk about how how you can really generate a lot of energy and you can really activate your nervous system to say put it in in a western terminology with that seated posture so i began with that posture and i began working on the concavity of my curve so what i was doing was i was setting up a posture and then leaning to the right so that the left side of my back was pulling behind the concavity and I was derotating. So I'm getting to Tai Chi and Qigong, but so I started, yeah. yeah, so so that I actually got good improvement and good changes. 
starting thinking about working on the concavity. So I got some good changes there. And I, to me, that makes me happy because as you mentioned earlier, no one has all the answers. This isn't fully, this isn't super well understood. And what I love is that even people with different perspectives are helping people and people are getting improvements. So the human body is not as simplistic as we are. You know, you get into the human body and it'll start to help you. you it'll work with you if you can do something that's sensible. Anyway, so see the posture. Then I got into Qigong and Tai Chi. I actually wanted to do a martial art. I said to my dad at one point, I was like, dad, can I do kickboxing? And he was like, you know, that's pretty like violent. You know, why don't you try to do something a little more chill? Now, <laughs> that was just my family's perspective. Like I do judo now, but anyway, so, and uh, so I went, well, I'll do Tai Chi then. Cause that's so cool, but I can imagine I'm really tough. You know? <laughs> so I joined a Tai Chi class. And um, of course, those of you who know anything about Tai Chi know that, you know, people don't use that for actual, you know, mixed martial arts or, you know, that kind of thing. You don't really have to train that kind of thing but um traditionally in tai chi that in china they do think about that a bit but that's a whole other subject so qigong and tai chi so i got into it i just i wanted to do a martial art i said okay i'll do tai chi found an amazing teacher here in montreal who studied with a master from the university who was teaching at the university of beijing um so she took me under her wing and uh by the time i was 19 i was teaching classes for her so i was so dedicated on it i started in you know a couple years earlier than that and I just loved it. I was just going three times a week and just fall, just doing it all in spare time. My wife said that when she first met me, my legs were so big because I was doing Tai Chi all the time and my upper body was thin. My professors at university said that too. And they said, now you're big in the upper body. Anyway, and um, so, so I got into that and I began right from the, when I was thinking about doing it, I was thinking about my back, right? Because I couldn't not think about my back. So, and what I loved about my teacher is she was and is very strict about how you hold your posture and so and so like i'm a really a stickler for how you hold your posture like you know it's in the details right because mm. when you can do tai chi like you could do tai chi and you could be doing these movements and you could just be leaning back leaning forward and not actually elongating and activating in a way that's actually going to help your mobility much okay so there's different ways to do tai chi like they say research shows that it's great for balance great for coordination generally which is true but mm -hmm. you know, there, are, there are better and worse ways to sort of work it, right? And teach it, I suppose, as, as, as we could say about anything, you know? So does that answer your question? <laughs> um, yes, 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 it does, kind of. But yeah, we can, we can definitely go a little bit deeper, um, deeper into it. So I'm, I am interested in what you said. You started working with your um, concavity first. Um, so it's a right thoracic curve, right? Yeah. Because yeah. yes, you are mirrored. So this, <laughs> this is a little bit confusing. Um, so so you were you were thinking about this kind of derotation aspect, I guess, in yes. primarily, and you wanted to get the the concavity backwards. Yeah, bringing it back to to even even yourself out. And is this so I I, again, uh, what I'm thinking of what, what Tai Chi is, is a lot of it's standing most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. You can, and the only time you do it sitting is if you can't stand, basically. Yeah. Is it, right. Okay. And, and quite um, move, movement mainly, right? It's not a static right. type of it's thing. Not. Right. It, right. And, and so, so if, we do, if we were to differentiate between Qigong or Qigong and Tai Chi, they have the, they're sort of like sister arts. They have the exact same posture rules, exact same breathing rules, exact same movement rules. But qigong, you're standing in place almost entirely. Right. So there's a little bit of stepping, but you're in place. And traditionally, they say that's more for developing energy and health generally. Whereas if we were to take tai chi, all same rules, same movement, same breathing, but you're moving all over the place. So a form of tai chi. Now I don't teach this in my program because an actual tai chi form. Is quite complex and you're walking forward backward left and right right so you're moving you're locomoting like really a lot of locomotion and then and traditionally they would say that's more for um mobility ability sort of mm -hmm. they say martial but yeah again like i said you'd have to really work on that aspect of it but so so that's a sort of a differentiation between the two of them but yes standing moving big movements leverage with the arms and the legs right Okay, and and just just tell me how um, why do you find this so beneficial for for scoliosis? Yeah, yeah, great question. And you know, I, I have to say that I wouldn't say so. People are really interested in the Tai Chi Qigong aspect, 
you know, and what I've found is people are like, oh, well, that's great, you know, and um, I, I would have to say that I wouldn't consider it alone to be something that I would recommend people do to, to get an improvement in your Cobb angle. Right. I would say that you need yoga. You need, really specifically, you need some side plank action and some other corresponding things that are really good. But for what we know that really changes your Cobb angle, it's not scoliosis. So I just want to say that. I meant to say it's not Tai Chi or, or yeah. Qigong. So, so what, but what we're doing with Tai Chi and Qigong is we're getting an elongation. Okay. So we're mm -hmm. producing an elongation. I can show you how we do that. So, um, and then on that elongation, what we're trying to do is we're trying to activate behind our convexity. So again, you know, it, that's what I'm doing now because I know more about why I want to activate behind the convexity and because I got more of a better um, response personally when I started working on my convexity. I found out that actually my right side was weaker than my left right. side and, okay. and I needed to, to, to work on that more. So, um, and it is. So, so again, I'm sort of kind of going all over the place here, but I feel like I'm not sure I quite answered your question. What was the... <laughs> I think I forgot now <laughs> as well. So you're but yeah, how, just yeah, wanted how... to acknowledge um, uh, the guys here here in the chat here. So feel free to first of all keep us on track because uh, you yeah. know we we are having fun here and it's it's very interesting going into all these things. Um, but Joanne is saying it's so interesting about focusing on on one's convexity and and I've kind of gone a little bit. I go back and forth on this, so I very much um, started on probably on the concavity. Again, that's how I learned it in, in the yoga for scoliosis, so that we're creating space in the concavity and we're, we're lengthening. And then obviously, and I, I'm guessing you are familiar with Dr. Fishman's work because yeah. I saw yes. a, a floating side plank on your, on your website. Um, so obviously then speaking to, to Dr. Fishman quite a lot, um, it, it all became about the convexity and we're, you know, we want to kind of strengthen the convexity. And then I've gone back to the concavity because in the, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Schroth, um, uh, yes. Schroth exercises, there it's all about strengthening the concavity, but in a, in a, elongated way obviously so we all kind of want the same thing <laughs> yes but it's just different um different different pieces to it so um so tai chi and qigong a little bit more on the kind of energetic side and then you're saying for the strengthening you use the the yoga you use the 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 side plank and and all of that is it kind of very much as per what dr fishman would would say is that kind of your approach as well that, that, that is that is uh that is very much my approach however i will have people balance it out so in my program okay i, I will i shouldn't say balance it out i i will work more on the convexity um because it's just getting better the best results that i'm seeing with my clients too and the scoliometer mm -hmm. readings which is part of my program too so we're, we're measuring that ro derotation and the yeah. derotation is going down um, you know, again, I didn't try it differently. You know, I already started the program focusing more on the convexity, but so I'll have them focus on the convexity. And then, so for example, let's say you have a right, uh, thoracic curve only, uh, or, or both a typical right thoracic left lumbar. So I'll have you do the, the working, the convexity of the thoracic, then I'll turn over convexity lumbar, but then in the second module, I'll have you go back to the other side. To eat, so convex concave. So I'll have you do planks on both sides because I don't want you getting too far into, mm -hmm. into something perhaps unbalanced. I also want you to be strong on both sides. I don't want you to not be able to do a plank at all on the other side. <laughs> yes. yes. You know? Yeah. So, so I kind of, I kind of marry those two. I try to have a harmonious marriage of more convexity, but also bringing it into the concavity for some balance there. Hmm. Yes, and then I th I think what you were we what you were saying was the Tai Chi about the elongation, wasn't it? I think that's why we're right. Yeah. Elong and I should also say, you know, I said elongation and then convexity, but you could also <clears throat> target the concavity just as easily, you know. And so what you're doing, what you're using to target, is you're using the levers of your arms and the positions of your hips and legs. I can show you a very basic possible. Yeah, yes, and I'm, yeah. I'm I'm happy to do it with you. I'm here, my. 
Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll show it to you first, or, or yeah. to any way you want, because you're, you know, you're yeah. movement. Yeah, show me, show me, place. yes. And yeah. I'll, uh... so, yeah, I did, I actually did um, a webinar with Dr. Fishman a couple weeks ago, and I saw the one you did with him, loved what you guys did, so it was fascinating, <laughs> a year or so ago. <laughs> <laughs> where I made him, where I made him, <laughs> I put him on the spot and I made him do a, a floating plank. Was it that one? I don't remember if no. that, that part of it. I just read he's always quick to jump into the jump. That was a few years ago. That was a few years ago. But he was in a suit and tie, basically. And I made him okay. do a, <laughs> <laughs> he's, a he's plank. Got, he's, yeah, he's, he's so good that he can jump into it. So, <clears throat> so the center of gravity of the human body is a couple inches below the belly button. Okay, so, so generally speaking, the lower the center of gravity, the more stable we are, right? We've got some different concepts like that, like the bigger they are, the harder they fall, you know, this kind of thing, levers, right? So, so the first thing we're doing, and sports cars, like the lower you are, the more stable you are. So um, the first thing that we're doing is we're bending the knees. So when you bend the knees, this lowers your center of gravity and it changes everything. It changes all the joint angles. And then, so then you have to deal with that. So that's where it becomes important to, to do it in a way that's good, sensible or rather beneficial. So slight bend in the knees, that lowers our center of gravity. Next thing we're gonna think about, hips back just a little bit. Why do I want hips back a little bit? Because I don't want anyone leaning backwards. And the first thing that a lot of people do is they bend their knees and they go like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's normal, that's right. It's not like you're doing something wrong. It's just a sort of a, you know, people, it's just sort of normal. So hip, knees bent, hips back an inch, say, then chest up a little bit. So thorax up and chin in an inch. So if we examine those four things, knees bent, hips back, that actually produces some gentle elongation force into your lumbar and lower thoracic vertebrae. Can you mm. feel that a little bit? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, a little bit of elongation and the, and the slight yeah. lean. Yeah, so, so right away you have less of a lumbar curve. We, for the record, we never wanna have a flat back. We want a neutral yeah. back, right? We're not, we're not trying to get rid of it, but it's a little <laughs> less, right? And then that lean, so I said hips back an inch, and you can play with that. Maybe you do a bit more. So you're familiar with the, the idea of the ready position? No. Okay, so this, so this is, yeah, th right. This is something they teach in, the, in like, in the, in fact, in the army. I'm not an army guy, but I, there's this guy, who, a special forces trainer, and I've done some of his workouts. Anyone can do it. Mark Lauren, brilliant workouts, hard stuff. But he talks about, he was a special forces trainer, and he talks about, the the ready position so they're jumping around they're like doing 180s and stuff and they're always right. you gotta be ready okay so but i mentioned this just because we can all intuit like think of a sport name a sport you know basketball you know mm. racing you know uh wrestling you know, like what, what do you want like baseball like you're never you're never ready for your action like this right oh, tennis yes <laughs> yeah tennis yeah no one is ever like okay i'm ready let's go right yeah you're never leaning back you're always this is the ready position. And this is also why when people get older, they, they come into this position because this feels manageable. This is not manageable, right? Mm. <laughs> so just conceptually. So we're getting a slight lean and we can play with that lean. Hip, knees bent, hips back. We can play with the lean. We can go more and we activate more back musculature. So this is one of the keys here, okay? But bringing it back to elongation. So we knees bent, hips back, elongation in the lumbar and into the lower thoracic, chest up, chin in produces elongation into the upper thoracic and cervical vertebrae. Yes. Okay, so you feel that a little bit? I can feel that, yeah. Yeah, so those four criteria to start with are how we produce elongation, okay? So on that basis then, what you wanna do is you wanna use the leverage of your arms and other positions you're going to be moving in, but basically the leverage of your arms. And so let's say we come up, we can inhale up, and then we exhale down. I'm just going to breathe. I, I'm out of breath a bit, so I'm just going to breathe the way I want to breathe. But ideally, you're slowing down and you're breathing in and you're breathing out. There's a whole breathing component, but we're not going to talk a lot about it. We could, but we're, we want to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. We want to do some abdominal breathing. It helps with proprioception, etc. But so that's an aside, but so when we come back to the posture, the arms now, so when we breathe in and we come up and we're, so we're lessening, when we come up, we're going to lessen all the angles. We're going to just stand up straight. So straight knees, everything normal. So almost, maybe even almost hyperextension, almost a military position a little bit. Um, you're not trying for hyperextension, but you're just standing up tall. Mm. And then, yeah. 
and then exhaling down the knees bend hips back chest up chin in so once you do this a few times you start coming up and down you start to realize it takes it's different for each person um and i think it can take a while but you start to get good at pulling where you want to as you go down and up so for example if we're to exaggerate it let's say i want to pull um here behind my right side of my thorax okay yeah. might look like the left. <laughs> it looks like the left yes well yeah <laughs> so the left that's all right well imagine that's the that's the yeah. right yes or or let's say i want to pull here okay so yeah. it doesn't really matter like if you're watching just imagine wherever you want to pull whatever side you want to pull let's say this looks like my right so i'm going to pull here yeah okay? so if i want to pull here i'm going to stick my butt out a bit more i have a joke i say if in doubt stick it out so you know <laughs> i like that <laughs> i'm going to use that <laughs> yeah. right it's like good posture you know um general general conseil, general advice Okay, so then we come up and I'm going to actually just pull, I'm going to shift this back. I'm going I'm to rotate back a little bit. I'm exaggerating, but just to show you. And then I'm going to let, let that arm, the weight of that arm, pull behind that side of my back. And what happens with scoliosis is that, I find, is that, and you can, I'd be interested to, to, for you to tell me what you, what you think about this. We have trouble having proprioception of our spine. We don't really, and this is very true for me, it's true for everyone I've worked with, we don't have a good sense of where those curves are. We, mm. we, you know, we don't really feel them the way we feel the placement of other limbs, you know, like we go reach for something, we know what we're doing, but the back. And so once you start going up and down, you get that elongation, you activate after a while, sort of like a reed or waving up and down through the spine. Every time you come down, you're elongating. Every time you come up, you're coming up. So after a while, you begin to feel, if you're imagining that as your back, you begin to feel where your curves are. You're going to feel sensitivity, right? So typically the convexity, because it's rotated backwards, it's out of alignment, it's out of biomechanical alignment. It's active, but it's weak and it feels weird. So once you start pulling, so let's just say you just want to pull up and down both sides of the back, okay? Mm. Fine, you know? But what's going to happen is you're going to unavoidably start noticing where your scoliosis is. Of course, part of working with your scoliosis is actually having an x-ray and knowing, right? But then you're going to experientially start to feel it. And once you start feeling it, you can start pulling where you need to, strengthening where you need to, stretching where you need to a bit, okay? So basically, let's say you spend some time doing some of these moves. At the end, you've been elongating and you've been working. And you've basically, it's, imagine you had your scoliosis spine, you know, and you've just been, it's like you've been getting in there and you've been kneading, strengthening, stretching, and you might feel a little uncomfortable. You might feel a little sore, right? Because you've been basically just elongating, you've been putting traction, gentle traction, and working all around. So it's like you get into it. And then as you get better at it, you can actually target very specifically where you need to. So for example, personally now, when I do Tai Chi, I'm always conscious of the weakness and the asymmetry and the rotation on my right side. Yeah. And I'm also conscious of hip asymmetry, glute asymmetry, all because I move in the Tai Chi form. So that's related to this is these are like different levels of detail, right? So again, mm -hmm. with scoliosis, you'll see that asymmetry pretty typically. So it took me quite a while to sort of, you know, I knew when I started Tai Chi that I was asymmetrical and I re it really drove home how asymmetrical I was. And by working with that, your proprioception improves. Your, so the different moves you do in Tai Chi, you know, your, your sense of how you're asymmetrical keeps getting better. And then you start making these little adjustments to hold yourself a little better. And those carry through into your activities of daily living. You begin to get these habits. Mm. So would you have like a different arm position, for example, on, on the right side and the, and the left side? If you're saying you're then adjusting it, is that what you're, is it mainly the legs and the arms that are yes, doing it's those? A yeah. It, 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 it's a good question. And uh, so it is the legs and the arms that are being used to activate the spine where we want. So you could think of it like that, right? The legs are our base and we, we adjust them a bit um, with the knees. And then the arms are so so the short answer is no um 
because I keep it really, really simple for my for my program. The, what, the short answer is that what I do is I just use these moves, but I have you. I'm going to, I have you do this. Right. Okay. okay. And so let's say this is the basic one. This is the most basic one. Actually, there's even one where you're just doing this. Okay. Just, you know, feeling your shoulders and getting some proprioception going, but then here's leverage. And then, and then I have them going up like this. So what, what I asked them to do is I, you know, like what you're saying makes is logical, right? Like you should have a different way that you're working behind where you want to work. So, but what I do is I just have them, I keep it super, super simple. And I try to just get them. So this is the next move. So here, this leverage here, again, I just have them change the angles of their hips and their shoulders to rotate their spine a bit, to change their position a bit, to activate where you want. So, but to your point, okay, so let's say there's a move, there's another move in Tai Chi like this, where you're going, but this is, this is much more complex, where you're walking and you're going back. So here, if someone were doing a move like this, then I could tell them at this point here, I want you to roll your shoulder back, settle your shoulder blade, and activate, you know, in, in that area, for example. But mm. I don't want to try to, sh as a general perspective, for people who are trying to improve their scoliosis, I'm not trying to teach you a whole form of Tai Chi. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were doing that, or if you really wanted to do that, I mean, maybe I should offer Tai Chi with a view for scoliosis, but it's mostly Tai Chi. But I couldn't tell people that this is going to be the thing that I think is really going to help you improve your scoliosis position. It's going to help you with proprioception, position a little bit, um, strengthening of your back, and symmetry, balance. But I would, as I sort of mentioned before, I, you know, I would say that this is a nice complement. This is a nice complementary therapy for scoliosis. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that, you know, for example, I wasn't, you know, I didn't get the best results on my back from the Tai Chi but it really helped me as, as, as an adjunct or complementary activity. I think from, I mean, from, from how you explain it, it it's, um, it's really the, the awareness part of it and um, sensing where, as you say, proprioception sense where you are and which way your, your spine is going and how it might be different. I think that's really, probably the, the the main kind of piece of it um i agree i agree that and some strengthening right some mm -hmm. some good strengthening some mobility of the spine mobility, and, yeah. And, yeah and to that point it would be most useful for people who struggle with balance as well as their scoliosis say mm. like to go more into tai chi you know some people like it for other reasons but if you were to say well what would it be most useful for it if you're really also struggling with balance and your symmetry is really messed up and your coordination vis-a-vis -vis your symmetry is really messed up, this would be of high value to you. But mm. in my experience, again, that's not most people with scoliosis either. Mm. Okay. So again, again, depending what you, what you need, you could say, okay, that would be more or less useful. But again, you know, it's complex. Tai Chi is complex, pretty complex. What I showed you there is not that complex because I don't, you know, and I don't want to start making things really complex for people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've we've got a um, a question here in the in the chat about um, well, a larger curve actually, a 60, 60 degree S curve, and if they can go to the gym with that uh, uh, large curvature, significant curvature. What what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty classic question. Um, so the first answer is yes. Um, the, yes, you can go to the gym. The second answer is when people say going to the gym, they're usually thinking about pumping iron and, <laughs> you know, lifting weights can be great. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Lifting weights can be great, but we're, again, we were just talking about leverage with Tai Chi, right? Like the weight of your arms. Now, once you add a weight, that leverage is vastly increased. So if you're going to lift weights, you have to be doing it in a way that's safe. You have to have your posture. You have to know how to hold your posture. And even, even without scoliosis, a primary concern for weightlifting in the gym is posture, which you may or may not know, right? Mm -hmm. Like weightlifters, if they, if bad posture, you'll screw up your back. You'll mess up your back yeah. really easily. Um, you know, you'll pull things really easily. So, so the short answer is, is yes. But then, but then if we go back a step and we say, you know, maybe you're, I would suggest, I would recommend that your first approach not be 
the gym per se. Like, let's look at this from a few different angles. You say, well, John, why? You know, so, okay, you want to go to the gym. Maybe you want to be on a treadmill. You want to be with people working out. You want to be inspired. You want to be healthy. You want to do some bands. A lot of different things you can do in the gym. So, yes, okay, but you have to go in there really knowing, cognizant of your back and what you're doing for your back. And so, but back to what I was saying before, what I would recommend is really, if you really want to help your back, is that you start more simple and you start more basic and you start with body weight exercises, which you can also do at the gym. <laughs> but I would say body weight and working on some flexibility and some mobility around the hips and the legs, because that also affects your spine and affects your mm -hmm. range of motion, your safe range of motion. So my primary concern is that you don't injure yourself. You know, I want you to be healthy, but I really don't want you to make it worse. And then you say, well, now I can't do anything because I've injured myself and I didn't move for three months and now everything is worse. So you have to approach it really gently. And I find that most people, this is just human. Like we want, me too. I want any good thing. We would like it to be, we'd like to get it with as little effort as possible. That's just normal, right? You know, but it's rarely that way. And so I, you know, I encourage people like really be, be really slow it down and be really kind of humble and accepting of your body and just start really slow and gentle and watch as you start to feel better, you know? So what I would say to wrap that up is, you know, we want, okay, I feel, I want to be fit. I'm, you know, I'm tired of this. Okay. I'm going to go to the gym. You go to the gym, you work really hard for two weeks and then you're floored, you're sore, you're injured, you're discouraged. So come into it really, really gently, really, really slowly. Okay. Mm -hmm. if that, that's some information around there. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I am. Um, and you can always start with a smaller, you know, even if you then, if you like using equipment, you know, just start with a Sarah band or, you know, some very, very light weights. You don't have to go to like the, the, the big machines straight away. Right. And hundred percent. Yeah. That's mm. yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm just reading here. Let me, so we've got, uh, I'm actually skinny, so I just want to gain some weight. Is it okay to go with a trainer without much pressure to the spine? So building up muscle is what I'm reading from that. Mm -hmm. And and I think, yeah, I mean, you, you tell me what you think, but I, I, I think it's really a good idea to find someone who understands scoliosis if you work with a trainer. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say too. Yes. You know? <laughs> Like, you know, you, you, you've got, and it's depending again on, on, on your curves, but even a minor curve, like my curve so minor is the central problem, but there's a lot of, you know, when we're talking about scoliosis, there's all these asymmetry issues, muscular asymmetry issues that go along with it. Right. Which were poorly mm -hmm. understood. But even with my minor scoliosis, that is the central and the, asymm the resulting asymmetry is the central plank of everything that I do. And I'm a pretty athletic person right now and i do some pretty intense stuff athletically but if i wasn't focusing on it with the back i've i've already hurt myself several times in the past i've mm -hmm. already you know like i've gone through these mistakes so exactly as christine said you know you, you mm. find someone who knows scoliosis because that's that's your crux like if you if you train without thinking about your scoliosis it's going to bite you in the butt maybe because you're going to be, mm. you're going to have to deal with your back sooner or later. You can't, yes, you can just start going and putting on muscle, but this back is the center of your whole body. So. Yeah. Out of interest, when you said you, you injured yourself before, um, do you find like a pattern? Does it, does it, or is it always on one side? Is it always on your convex or concave side or does it kind of just out of interest? Oh, yeah, no, a great question. I'm happy. I'm, yeah, this is this is what's fun about conversations, right? There's just you know bouncing off points, and there's a lot, so many neat things to talk about. Um, so, so basically, m what I discovered over the years is that I was using. I'm also left-handed. Okay. So, so this is another thing which we possibly have to consider when we're talking about scoliosis. Yeah. I don't, I'm, you know, I don't. Again, poorly researched, but so I'm left-handed. My my forward rotation was to the left. Okay. So, so this whole side of me is all my action. So what I discovered over the years is that this was strong and I was actually using the left side of my back to the exclusion of the right side of my back, mm. including my right glutes 
and hamstrings. Okay, this again, this is personal. People are a little different. There are some yeah, patterns yeah. in this purple. So, um, so what I discovered is that I was injuring my back because I wasn't doing motions with with a number of different things. First of all, I did some things where I was doing a flat back and then I was loading on my back. So I wasn't keeping a neutral spine. So again, Christine will understand like more about, Christine, you understand more about why, like we don't have to get into all the details about why. Then I found out, we could though. Then I found out, uh, as I said, using more of the left side. So I was doing load bearing stuff, um, but not using my back in an integrated way. So slowly, slowly, I've been activating the right side more and more. And, and becoming actually stronger than I've ever been, which is mm. funny. I'm going to be 45 this year. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's the short answer is that, is yeah. that yeah, the typical area. And I was injuring myself in, in those ways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm asking, I find it very interesting. I've been looking more into the uh, neuroscience and, and all of that and, um, you know, all, all, all these connections. And my curve, my main curvature is the left lumbar. I am right-handed <laughs> and whenever I have an injury, it's on the right side of my body, <laughs> which is, which is, I just find it very interesting. And, and I find this with a lot of clients when they have injuries, it's like, it's whatever, it's, it's one side. Oh, my left leg hurts, my left shoulder, everything is on the left side. So, um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, maybe it's related to dominances. So a dominant side is where you're going to work harder. So it could mm. be related to overworking. You know, that, that could be one factor. I doubt it, you know, for you. But again. Mm, yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, as you say, there's, there's so many, there's so many um, different pieces to, to, to this as well. Obviously, and we move one side. Where, while we move one side, the other side is the stability side. So, um, you know, and the right side of the brain is, you know, doing all the motor on the left side and, you know, all, all these bits and pieces where you say it's like so many, yes, yeah, so many things um, about the human body, um, which is just so fascinating. And as you say as well, it's so individual. Um, we cannot, you know, have like say you, everyone does this and all your scoliosis will be gone forever. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Unfortunately, all... it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Right. That's what we've all been hoping for, right? That's what everyone's been hoping for. That's, is, you know, that's what we're all hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you've definitely given us hope. So you 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 don't have a, like a visible curve on the um, on your X-ray anymore. So you obviously kind of got rid of some of that. What would you say to someone who's kind of He's maybe just been diagnosed because there's a lot of people, obviously, who are browsing the internet and then looking for information. Maybe have just been diagnosed. Um, is there is there hope? Um, can yes, can scoliosis? This is another question we get all the time. Can we cure scoliosis? Yeah, you know, it's it's such a great question, Christine, and and there is so much hope. There is so much hope, but no. I wouldn't say we can cure scoliosis. So let's break that down. You know? yeah. like, there, there is so much hope because the human body is so much more changeable than we actually ever knew. So like if, if those of you watching, if there's one important takeaway, uh, I would, in my mind, from it, it, exactly as, as Christine just brought up, this, this whole issue, you know, if you, if you go back, say, to the 60s or 70s and you look at Olympic athletes, you know, we watch like old Olympics and we see athletes. And then we look at athletes now. I don't know if you know if any of you are familiar with the CrossFit Games. Have you heard of this? Have you ever seen this? It's on. Uh, so these the CrossFit. These people are. They're. It's supposed to be like the best in the world in terms of what they can do. So they can do like eighty pull-ups or a hundred. It's unbelievable. Okay, they're all like and men and women and they're and they're. I mean, they're just unbelievable. And so you what we what we've what we've done what we've our kinesiological. Kinesiology, by the way, is just a fancy way of saying exercise science, right? Ology, science, kinesis, movement, kinetics, movement. So, so what what we've come like? I graduated in two thousand and five, and my degree it was kind of early. Not every university had a, 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 a degree in kinesiology or exercise science. Now it's everywhere. So, in the past 30, 40 years, all this to say, our knowledge of the human body has advanced so much. What people are doing with their body is unbelievable. Like people were never getting this strong, never getting this fast, right? 
et cetera, et cetera. So we keep getting better at changing the human body and your body also wants to help you. So there's another factor, right? Like your nervous system is always trying to help things work better. And so by you showing your nervous system where you're out of alignment, by you going there gently and showing your nervous system, oh man, this is, you know, oh, that's sore. This is stiff. This is out of alignment. Your nervous system goes, oh, okay. You know, so when we were in school, we were taught 48 hours for muscle development, 72 hours for nervous system development. These are ballparks, okay, that give you an idea. Your muscles develop after you work them. Your nervous system also changes and it wants to help you change your back. So people are changing their cob angles, they're lessening their cob angles, and they are decreasing their rotation measurably. Right now, it's happening. People are doing it. Is it straightforward, like going to do a bicep curl and getting a big bicep? No, <laughs> you know, but there's so much hope. And so then regarding the cure thing, okay? So that's a misnomer. People keep saying cure, cure. Like, you know, first of all, um, well, you can't expect to get a perfectly straight spine, okay? You can't, no, no one should, no one can tell you I'm going to make your spine without any club angles at all, okay? Or I don't know. I don't think anyone can do that or, or guarantee that for you. Mm -hmm. but, but you can start getting in there and you can start working. You can start measuring and you can go ahead and check and see. And so what's happening is that people are, so I had a 16 year old girl, 45 degrees, scoliosis 50 on the top 50, or the opposite, lumbar was a primary, like 55, 45. Her surgery was all they were recommending. She was being followed for surgery. Her parents really didn't want surgery. We worked extremely hard for six months and she got a decrease in her club angle by four and a half, five degrees in the thoracic. And her lumbar didn't increase for the first time in five years of six months right. of exercise. So that was, you know, and that was, so she worked extremely hard though. She did like so many exercise sessions. I have another client, other clients, an older uh, a lady, less exercise sessions, fused even, but the scoliometer. So this is after operation, had rods taken out years ago, needed to get working on her back because it's painful. The scoliometer readings decreased really significantly. So once again, got some improvement in that rotation. So I, you know, I'll just keep talking forever. So you got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, this is, this is great. And yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, people are saying hello and people are saying thank you so much for explaining. Um, I think this has been really, really interesting and, and same for me. I can, you know, I can talk for hours about this, um, but tell us, John, where can people find you and, and how can they work with you if they're like, Oh, I really am really interested now in, in uh, exploring this a little bit further. Yeah, uh, well, you can, I think you sent out a thing with, uh, with my website, right? Yes. So it will be in the, if, if you're joining on YouTube, obviously there will, there is a description um, with the, the links, mm -hmm. but um, yes, how, how can they work with you? Um, do they have to come to Canada? Um, do you do mm -hmm. online sessions? Um, yes, yeah. that's, that's what I was after. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, no, you don't have to come here to Canada. There are people here in Montreal who do come here and will work here. Um, but two thirds of the people I work with are online. So we do Zoom. I have a nice setup and we, we get you going. You know, we, we do a we do a careful assessment and I watch you working. I correct you online. Um, we go through things. I give you a nice workout sheet. I have my exercises. We put some in, take some out, depending what you need. And, um, so online is, is hundred percent an option. Obviously in person is, is ideal, right? You can't, can't, you know, that, that, that that's always true, but, um, online is still very successful. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I offer, you know, a trial class, uh, uh, sort of a more inexpensive trial class that you can see on my website there, where you just spend an hour with me talking about your situation. I show you what I can offer and what my program is about. And you can decide if that's something you want to do or not. You know, there's many great people out there like Christine, what you're doing is, a, I love what you're doing. You've been doing this for a long time. You're, you're, I feel like you're a pillar in this community of people <laughs> working like this. And you've been, you know, so we really appreciate it and respect it. And, uh, uh, and, and it's, so it's really an honor for me and um, to connect with you and, and be able to share with you. And again, I just want to bring this back again, you know, like folks, there is hope. There's hope, but you have to start. You start slow. 
you start gradual and you have to be very patient with yourself. But the bot, you know, the bottom, someone said to me, so John, is I going to have to be doing exercise for the rest of my life? And I was like, mm. oh, gee, poor you. You're going to be <laughs> healthy and strong and more flexible. And you're going to age better. All your doctors want you to exercise, <laughs> you know, like, you know, come yeah. on, you can do something. There's so much hope. So yeah, please. I just I just saw um, a video of this. Uh, I don't know how old she is now. She's like 96 or whatever. She's a gymnast, like a professional gymnast. And it's like it's, it's amazing. Right. What if you know, if you keep moving, <laughs> you're going to be in like really, really good shape. Yeah. <laughs> good. So uh, we've got a question here. Would you would you need to see an X-ray? Um, for working together. Yeah, it's, I, I, it really is ideal. You know, not a hundred percent because we. Well, the first thing, one of the first things I do is we do. Uh, we do. I teach you how to use a scoliometer, and I also teach you how to do what's called a line drawing, where you get a very basic drawing of your curves. It's super simple, but it helps you understand. And you have it on paper. You put it on your fridge, and it gives mm -hmm. you a sense of where your curves are. So a rudimentary sense. So it's not a hundred percent necessary, but it's really, really. You know, it's almost 100% necessary. I just, I just don't want to say no, but, the, but I'll tell you one of the advantages is that I am that much more cognizant of exactly what's happening in your back, and so are you. And six months to a year from now, you're going to want to get another X-ray to see on X-ray if you've improved or not. So there's a number of those two very good reasons, right? For it helps me, helps you. <laughs> Let's say that's one. Number two, you're going to want to see. If you're going to want to see on x-ray, whether your club angle is improving. So mm. please get an x-ray. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lovely. Fun. Thank you so much, John. I think we're definitely going to have you in the, in the shine membership. Hopefully you can teach us, teach a, teach a little workshop for us. I think that would be great. I think everyone would love that. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us live as well. Um, and chipping him in here with the with the questions. Obviously, you can go back and, and check them out afterwards as well. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch with us, obviously. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. It's an honor. I look forward to working with you in different capacities in the future. Maybe you can get you into my program and teach us something yoga too. We'll see. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so 